Welcome back into my garden and today I am very excited to be talking about this amazing plant in front of me which is perennial basil. It's a plant that everybody has to have in their garden. I'm going to be talking about everything to do with perennial basil, how to plant it, benefits, medicinal values, how to prune it, everything to do with perennial basil is going to be in this video. So stay tuned, you're going to love it, you're going to learn a lot and I'm pretty sure after seeing this, if you don't already have it, you'll have perennial basil in your garden. So just to kickstart things, what is perennial basil? That's a good question. Perennial basil is the same as any other basil. It falls within the same family. And for those of you that didn't know, that is the mint family. So if you hear mint, you tend to run. When you hear basil, you don't. Same family, just obviously very different growth habits. There are a range of different types of ba basil. There's a beautiful little, I don't know if you can see it over there, bee busy doing its thing. There are so many different types of basil. The most common basil that we all know and that we see in the shops is sweet basil. That's also what you usually use with pestos, just to make it that little bit sweeter. But if you have your own home garden, sweet basil can be very finicky to grow. It bolts at the sign of any kind of heat, and it, you need quite a lot of it to be able to get any kind of value from it. That being said, as with perennial basil, it's an amazing pe pest deterrent. But for me personally, I don't see that the return is nearly as significant as growing perennial basil. So what is it? It is also a culinary herb, meaning it's used in many different types of dishes and cooking. It's also a medicinal herb. And there are claimed health benefits to this plant. I've used it for quite a few of them and it's worked for me, whether it's placebo effect or legit, I'm not going to get into that. I'm not a scientist. I'm not a medical doctor, but I'll go into some of those as well. So all in all, perennial basil is much like any other basil you know. The only difference is it's grown as a perennial, meaning it continues growing. It doesn't die at the end of every season, like sweet basil as an example, which is an annual basil. Perennial meaning it comes back every year and just keeps growing and growing and growing and growing until you prune it to however you need it. So now that we know what this beautiful plant is, let's talk about how to grow perennial basil. We're going to talk specifically about lighting, watering, feeding and the soil. So let's look at lighting. It's a plant that absolutely loves sun. It can handle a little bit of semi-shade. I have some in the other garden, the pink perennial basil, which has beautiful purple leaves. It has morning sun and afternoon shade. It's doing really, really well. This guy in front of me has full sun the entire day and it's in a pot. So you can see it absolutely loves it. The bees, obviously, as soon as the sun comes out, the flowers just illuminate and the bees are everywhere. So full sun preferably, if they're in a pot in full sun, obviously then be conscious of watering. But all in all, full sun is what they're gonna to need to do their best. Me personally, I grow all of my perennial basil in pots. Reason being is for some other odd reason, we have runner moles and the runner moles absolutely love perennial basil. <laughs> they are so many times that I've had perennial basil planted in the garden and I come out in the morning, phew, the plant's gone, completely gone, sucked into the hole. It's the most bizarre thing and I haven't actually found much about it online or speaking to other people. So maybe it's an, an isolated case for me where the moles in this area like the smell and taste of perennial basil. I don't know, but for that reason, I grow them in the pots. Second reason I grow them in pots is to be able to move them around. This one here I've put to keep pests away from my brinjals. And if I needed to, I can move it around. There's another one in a pot that I've just put in between one of my pumpkins. 
And what that's doing is busy confusing things like fruit flies and other worms that want to come in and start sussing out the pumpkins and any of the other squashes you're growing. And then I've also planted them throughout and I've moved them from season to season wherever I need them in the garden. Um, for me personally, that is a really powerful tactic to be able to use in the garden is having perennial basil in pots and being able to move it around. But when it comes to watering your perennial basil, you need to make sure that they, they have a consistent amount of moisture in the soil. They don't like being dry. You'll see it very quickly. The leaves will just droop down and then as soon as you water, they'll come back up, but you don't really want to be unnecessarily stressing out the plants. So what you want is a really rich organic potting soil. If you have it in a pot, that's going to hold a lot of moisture. Anything that's too free draining, it's going to drain out and the moisture is going to be used up pretty quickly. If you look at the amount of leaves on this bush in front of you from a, that is a 24 centimeter pot you can see that through evaporation, just based on the leaf surface area, it's gonna be pretty quick. So watch your moisture levels. If it's in the ground, obviously you've got a little bit more leeway than you do in pots. And then let's talk about feeding. So for me personally, I don't do a lot of feeding with any of my plants. I've adopted the no dig principle. Thanks to the genius Charles Dowding, I'm an absolute fan of him. Um, and I, I really have not been using fertilizers in the garden. This one in front of me have not touched fertilizers. I pretty much bottomed it off about two months ago um, for pestos. And this is the new growth. And I'll bring you in closer so you can see the new versus woody growth. But I don't feed them. If you feel that you need to feed them, you can probably feed them once a month with a balanced fertilizer. I would stay away from the high nitrogen fertilizers. Because they're flowering plants, you want to give them that balance to be able to put out flowers, which is what they're so well known for. And then also obviously balance that out with the growth to be able to give you the leafy greens to make super yummy dishes. So this brings us to the next point, which is pruning. Now, if you have a look here, you can see that one was pruned out there. And look at all of this growth that it's put in in about two months also branched off on this side and then further down it's also shot off a whole bunch of branches so that begs the question how do you prune perennial basil and it's a good question there are basically two ways to effectively prune perennial basil the first one is if we look at this little branch growing here you can see there's a little flower bud starting over there um, and it's coming off a side branch. If you wanted to, technique one is tip pruning. So you'll see the little tip is there. I've just taken the growing tip out. And what will happen now is from each of those sides, two new little branches will come out much like here. So tip pruning is the first one. The second one is if you want to lower the height of the plant, then if you look at this one here, for instance, there are multiple branches that are coming out forking sideways. So you could go in here, take it off, snip it, and there you've opened it up, allowing light in, and you've still already got those two that are there. If you are pruning to a branch that doesn't have two forks that are existing like that, then what you can look for is they all have little leaves growing on the inside. Those are the little dormant buds that are sitting there. As soon as you prune this off, the hormones and auxins are then going to be sent back and those two are going to start branching out and will eventually turn into that pretty, pretty quickly. Now to show you the effect of pruning, if we look in here, you can see that one we took off there, which has basically gone up to the one that we've just pruned now now branching out again. If we go down, this one is growing all the way up so we could probably prune that. If we take a deeper look at the old wood versus all of the new wood, the green versus the brown, you'll see that not too long ago this entire bush was pruned down to 
these three primary branches. It was topped pretty much there and everything was used for pesto. So this whole bush that you can see here is about two months growth from a hard prune. So don't be scared to prune your perennial basil. It'll respond incredibly well to it and give you a continuous supply of basil that you probably are not going to end up knowing what to do with. So next up we're talking about how to propagate perennial basil. So if we look at the, the branch that I cut off there as an example, all you're going to do is cut off the side branches and leaves that exist. You can leave two or three further up, that's perfectly fine. And then what you're going to do is put this in a jar of water until it shoots roots. It's super easy to propagate. I've got a few that are sitting underneath some of my citrus trees that I did this with just more as a pest repellent but it's super easy take a cutting like this remove the bottom branches leave one or two put it in some water and then obviously out of direct sunlight so that you don't have any evaporation loss or, or burn to the leaves or the, root, the roots for perennial basil like this that is planted in the ground Many of you up north in South Africa and for in a lot of parts of the world will be concerned with winter. What can you do with your perennial basil? So they will die down in frosts and in extremely cold weather. So you do need to overwinter them if they're planted in the ground. If they're in pots, obviously you can then just move the pot to a more sheltered position. But if they're not in pots, they are going to need protection. The frost cover, if you build a little net structure over it, um, anything that's going to provide it cover from, from direct cold, stop it from dying back. But in a nutshell, if you want to overwinter perennial basil in a cold environment, you're going to have to provide it with some kind of protection. So now as the afternoon sun comes beaming in, I'm pretty sure if you don't have perennial basil, by now you've decided you need it. If you haven't, then let's go into the next section, which is benefits. Firstly, what are the benefits of having perennial basil in the home garden? For me personally, there are two primary benefits. This little guy that's just landed here, which is pollinators. These perennial basil plants bring in huge amounts of pollinators. I see predatory wasps on here and obviously huge amounts of bees. There are currently three bees on this one right now and I'm sure you've seen on some of the clips that I've been showing you there's just an ongoing supply of bees and this starts at like half past five in the morning. It's crazy the bees are here the whole day and then obviously what happens is they don't stay here they go to other places in the garden, <clears throat> which is what you want because you need have plants that need pollinating. Secondly, I keep perennial basil and lots of it in pots all over for its pest deterring ability. Pests do not like the smell of perennial basil. It's incredibly strong. It's much stronger in scent and flavor than sweet basil. So you don't even need to brush up against it to smell it. You just walk past it and you get this incredibly strong whiff of basil. And the pests know that. So here, for instance, you can see nasturtiums and perennial basil planted next to each other. This bed behind me, this one here, never has any pest issues. Between the two, the ones deterring, and if any come in, they're going straight for the nasturtiums. This is a little micro ecosystem working its own magic and is really working for me. So even if you aren't going to use it for, for any of the culinary reasons, purely bringing in pollinators and using it as a pest deterrent is a really, really good reason for you to grow perennial basil in the garden. So what does perennial basil taste like and smell like? Well, that's a good question because that's going to impact how you use it. Perennial basil has a much stronger taste. It's not nearly as subtle and sweet as the sweet basil that we find more often in the shops. It needs to be used correctly, otherwise it can actually be not great. So if you want to use it, then what you must make sure of is firstly that you prepare, prepare it correctly. 
and that it makes sense for the dish. So some really, really good dishes that you can use this in um, are obviously Thai dishes, fresh. It's amazing as a pesto. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually do a video for you on the pesto because it's not a traditional pesto. If you make it according to a sweet basil pesto recipe, and trust me, I've done that, it's going to taste horrible. So it's a slightly different recipe. Um, like I said, I'll give you that recipe, not go into it now. But basically it is a completely separate or different flavor profile that you need to be aware of. It's amazing on pizzas, any Italian dishes, any Thai dishes used fresh. Um, I quite often have it as teas and it has quite a lot of health benefits when it comes to tea. So basically what you do is you can take about a handful like that of leaves, probably a little bit less actually, about that much fits in the palm of your hand. Put that in with boiling water and then a very important part is put a saucer or a lid on top so that you don't let the essential oils inside the basil leaf evaporate and then drink it as a tea. It'll be confusing because the smell is going to smash you so hard and then you're going to taste it and it's this beautiful subtle silky flavor. It doesn't taste anything near what it smells like and it has claimed benefits of anti-anxiety. I use both perennial basil and lemongrass and it chills me out completely <laughs> so it does work and then the other claimed benefits which I don't really want to go into because I'm not a medical doctor and I haven't used them for those medicinal reasons all I can say is it has a very calming effect for me and um, so I use it for tea pesto and then in fresh Italian and Thai dishes pizza as well is amazing so thank you for watching my video on everything to do with perennial basil i hope i had all the points covered i hope that you are inspired to get perennial basil into your garden into your diet and just start feeding the wildlife and keeping those pests away it's truly an amazing plant and if you don't have it you need to get it if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it if you follow, follow my journey and subscribe so you can get notifications of videos as and when I publish them. If you've got any questions about perennial basil, please drop them below. I'm more than happy to give them an answer. And yeah, all in all, the complete guide basically on how to grow perennial basil. I hope you got everything you need to be equipped to just go and plant it everywhere. Until next time, happy gardening.